Now let's look at the overall synthesis architecture of the JX03. So we have two oscillators, DCO1 and DCO2. These are the controls for DCO1, a bit limited when compared to DCO2, as it has additional tuning controls. There's a cross modulation section here where you can create a lot of interesting distortion of the wave shape. There's a frequency modulation section here, and you get two dials here to control the depth of modulation. We will be exploring all this in detail later on. Next is the filter section. Here you get a dial that controls the balance between the two DCOs that will be sent to the filter. There's a basic high pass, and below is a more featureful low pass filter with some modulation controls for the cutoff. You get LFO modulation, key tracking, and envelope modulation. The envelope can be inverted with a switch here. Next is our amp section with basic level control and a switch to select gate mode or envelope mode. Next is the LFO section with a bunch of controls. Waveform, delay time, and rate. We will see these in action later on. Lastly, here you have the envelope section with controls for attack, TK, sustain, and release. Now I have the keyboard module plugged in so I can play the synth. I can use the pitch bend ribbon control. The mod wheel as well, which controls the vibrato amount here. I'll speed that up a bit. There's also a chorus switch here to engage the chorus effect. There's also a sequencer. Tapping the chorus and manual button simultaneously will show the sequencer on the preset switches. Tapping the manual button again will start the sequencer. When you tap the manual switch, the synth now produces sounds based on what each control is currently set to, irrespective of the preset. So now it becomes a lot easier to visualize the settings on the synth and make changes. Now I can load in a preset. So there are three banks here. Let's say I select bank A and load in this third preset here. So I get this organ sound. But the dials don't represent the sound. When I touch a dial, you notice how the sound snaps to the current value of the dial. So now only that one dial is showing the correct value. So it can be a bit tricky to see what's happening on each preset since we don't have motorized dials that jump to the values set in the preset. But manual mode makes things a bit easier to understand things. So I will be using this mode a lot during this course. Okay, so now that we know the architecture of the synth, in the next tutorial, let's dive deeper into the DCO section.